Welcome to An Engineer's Life, Episode 6, Risk. My name is Dave Roysom. Whether you are considering going back to school, making a job change, riding a motorcycle, or merely walking into your own bathroom, you will incur risk. Understanding and managing risk is the subject of this brief clip. Going back to school entails investments and risks. The payback period for this decision varies enormously depending on the degree. For example, the payback for an engineering master's is a few years, while the payback for a PhD in engineering may be a decade or more. Other disciplines may be faster or slower. Some degrees may never pay back within your lifetime though you still may want to pursue them for personal reasons. Other factors must also be considered. Can you pay for it? Do you have the temperament and intellect and discipline to finish? If you're the head of a household, as I was, these considerations weigh even more heavily. Add to this the need to get the blessing of one's spouse or partner. Changing jobs is also risky. Leaving a job to start a new business is even more risky. About 80% of all small business startups fail within a couple of years. The failure rate for engineering consultants is even higher. Also, the payback is very uncertain. The best you normally can expect is to have a similar standard of living as you would have had if you had remained an employee. Still, non-monetary considerations also play a role in decision-making. It is nice, sometimes, to be your own boss. Yet, even this is not a clear benefit. You must respond to customers even more attentively than you would a boss. If customers ask you to jump, you say, how high? The bottom line is to study the risks, the payback, and honestly consider all other externalities. At any one time, I may have as many as five helmeted hobbies. For example, I am a current ACA-rated whitewater kayak instructor. I can teach on Class 3 whitewater and personally, on occasion, run Class 4. Lately, I do most of my boating on a stand-up board including running Class 3 waterfalls. Other helmeted hobbies include bicycles, motorized bicycles, and motorcycles. Also, I love skating of all types, including jam skating and skating at skate parks with the kids. You can see all of these activities on this all web handling channel in YouTube and elsewhere. Still, without a doubt, the riskiest activity I've ever undertaken was to design, build, and fly experimental aircraft. Some time ago, I fell in love with radio-controlled airplanes. Unfortunately, I crashed a dozen airplanes before I taught myself to be a good acrobatic model airplane flyer. The process was one of frequent failures. At its worst, three weeks of building might yield only 30 seconds of flying before the next build and repair cycle. And the airplanes got bigger. Shown here is a plane with a 10 foot or 3 meter wingspan that my brother and I built. Inspiration can come from any number of sources. This particular one was for an ad in the back of a model airplane magazine for a kit for a full-sized airplane that you can fly. This is where overconfidence can help. I said to myself, you know, self, I think you could build one of these. They're just like an oversized wooden model airplane. Also, as often the case for engineers, we like to improve things that did not necessarily need improving. So, I put an engine twice as big as the maximum recommended size 
and had to do structural analysis and redesign to accomplish this and other changes. So, for the next two years and 2,000 hours, I built this airplane in my basement. Note to hobbyists of all types, it takes half again as much money and twice the time to do most projects than what the catalogs indicate. During this time, I also took the courses and lessons required to pass and earn a private pilot license. This project was an initial success in many ways. It was a great plane to fly. I showed it at several air shows, including the largest one in the world, the EAA at Oshkosh. I even won an award at one small air show, the People's Choice Award at the annual Spud Fly-In in Anago, Wisconsin. I got a plaque and all the potatoes I could carry home, which wasn't many in the case of this tiny airplane. However, you know all good things must eventually come to an end. After more than three years and 300 hours of flying this plane, I had an engine failure. It was at the worst possible place, over a city. It was at the worst possible time, at night. It reminded me of the gallows humor of one of my private pilot instruction classes. A student asked a teacher if one should use lights during an emergency night landing. The teacher thought about it for a bit and said, Turn your lights on initially, and if you don't like what you see, turn them off. However, let's save the rest of this story for another clip. Stay tuned. Many activities cannot be done without accepting risk. These include going back to school, starting a new business, and taking up a helmeted hobby. However, I don't want to leave you with the impression that all risks are monetary or life-threatening. Some activities are highly threatening to one's own ego. Many of you fear public speaking or looking like a fool on a dance floor, both of which I do frequently. I am also petrified of singing in public, such as in church. So, how do you manage risk? Well, we study the facts and figures of actual risk related to our particular pursuit rather than the perceived risks. In small aircraft, flying into bad weather or running out of gas are the top two killers and both are entirely avoidable. Also, the risk of flying in a commercial jet is so low as to be considered negligible, thanks to the very strict FAA rules for airplanes, airports, and pilots. Also, for example, wearing a motorcycle helmet will cut the death rate by 20%. Yet, taking a motorcycle training class and never drinking a drop of alcohol will both cut the risk by half. Here, for example, many people are afraid of terrorists. Yet, since 2001, more U.S. citizens were killed by toddlers with guns than were killed by terrorists. So, please stay tuned for the next clip where we talk about what to do if something goes horribly wrong, such as happened to me when my airplane engine quit at the worst time and place. See you next time.